lay out all parts in a logical fashion following the schematic. Match original parts to their service kit replacements and remove all old parts. Thus, after reassembly, no parts should remain on the work surface. Add a lightly lubricated O-ring to the port swivel, followed by the large washer. Place the small washer and nut inside the end cap and hold the nut in place with your forefinger. Spin the port swivel onto the threads from below ensuring that the large washer remains centered. Holding the port swivel with a vise handle and using a six millimeter hex socket, torque the nut to 70 inch pounds in a single smooth motion. Do not walk the nut in with repeated applications of torque. Using the bushing tool to provide a floor for insertion, install a lubricated stiff O-ring number 27 into its land in the end cap side of the body. Use a thin wooden dowel or a brass spade to work the O-ring into the land. Then insert and remove a lightly lubricated piston bullet to ensure that the O-ring is properly seated. Create a stack of parts on the piston bushing tool with the most superficial part first and the deepest part last. That is, the steel washer first, then a generously lubricated high pressure o ring, and finally the Teflon washer. While the manual recommends other steps before inserting the stack, Consider inserting the seal assembly now so that it does not pick up lint or other debris from the work area while awaiting insertion. Centering it carefully, push the stack into the bore of the body. You may feel a slight click as O-ring 27 passes into the narrowest part of the bore. If the steel washer comes out with the tool, drop it back into place and then gently rotate it flat with a wooden dowel rather than with the bushing tool. Prepare the piston by adding a lightly lubricated O-ring to the piston head. Protect the knife edge during this operation by inserting a brass piston bullet, being careful not to strike the knife edge on insertion. Now add a washer and the mainspring. To prevent displacement of the top washer on the spring, instead tack the washer in place with two tiny dots of lube deep inside the reg body. Pressing it into place with a dowel, it will not be dislodged when you invert the body for reassembly. Taking the end cap in hand, wipe a thin film of lube on the piston head land inside. With the piston and spring held perfectly in line with the end cap, gently push the piston head down into its land. Feel carefully for a potential pinch of the piston head O-ring. If it begins to extrude due to an off-center insertion, do not persist. Instead, pull back and try again. With the piston in place, you're now ready for assembly of the end cap. If it was not done earlier, insert the washer O-ring stack into the bore of the body, feeling again for that slight click as the Teflon washer and O-ring pops into the narrowest portion of the bore. Now reverse the bushing tool and use the hollow end to hold the stack in place for piston insertion. Insert the piston end cap assembly into the reg body from the opposite side using the piston bullet to maintain a straight axis during insertion. It is best to perform this operation with the reg held vertically to keep the mainspring centered. 
Do not push too firmly on the bushing tool, but use it to keep the O-ring gently in place as the bullet, followed by the piston shaft, slides by. The bullet shields the knife edge of the piston shaft, preventing it from shearing the critical number 27 O-ring seal. Press the end cap in firmly until the spring meets the body, and compressing the spring, engage the first thread. Now screw the end cap on hand tight. Remove the bushing tool and piston bullet, paying attention not to lose the loose metal washer from the top of the stack. Brace the regulator by attaching a vice tool in a high pressure port. Attach a number five hook spanner and tighten the end cap until you have firm metal to metal contact. There is no torque setting. Maintain firm pressure on the pin to avoid slipping and scratching the finish. Once again, confirm that the metal washer has been retained. Drop a lightly lubricated O-ring into the high pressure end of the body and carefully tamp it into place with a wooden dowel. Do not use a metal tool for this operation. Add the spring on top of the washer stack, being careful not to scratch the piston knife edge on insertion. Add the O-ring to the high pressure seat retainer. And then push the high pressure seat into the retainer with the concave side up and the spoked or flat side down. Check that the seat is flat in the retainer. Now hand thread the seat retainer into the body and follow with a hex key. Using a five millimeter hex socket, screw the seat retainer into the body and torque it to 130 inch-pounds in a single smooth motion. Do not walk the retainer in with repeated applications of torque. Attach the rubber end cap, aligning the notch in the cap with the DIN inlet. With clean fingertips to avoid clogging the filter with lubricant, Insert the filter and an unlubricated O-ring into the filter retainer. Ensure that it is seated, but do not lubricate the filter retainer threads. While you can add the saddle and simply screw the retainer into place, there is a small chance that the O-ring will slip out of position and be pinched during tightening if the O-ring and filter shift position when the filter retainer is inverted. Consider placing the saddle on the filter retainer concave side up and taking the regulator body in your other hand, screwing the retainer up into the reg body until the O-ring is captured. When the retainer is finger tight, it is now safe to invert the regulator. The hex flats on the filter retainer are shallow to facilitate rotation of the DIN wheel. An open-end crowfoot attachment fits flush against the saddle and is suitable for torquing. However, if it slips, it will damage the hex. Alternatively, a six-point socket will apply force on all six sides of the fitting. However, most standard sockets have a chamfer, which decreases the area over which force is applied. This socket may slip on the low-profile hex flat and chip a point. If a socket is your tool of choice, consider grinding the chamfer flat so that the tool engages fully on the hex flats. Using your preferred tool, apply firm downward force to keep the tool from slipping and torque the filter retainer to 260 inch-pounds in a single smooth motion. Do not walk the retainer in with repeated applications of torque. 
Slip the hand wheel over the filter retainer, tank threads up. Install three lightly lubricated O-rings on the retainer housing. Insert the retainer housing in the hand wheel and use a 4 mm straight shaft hex socket to torque the retainer housing to 86 inch pounds. Do not use a ball end hex to tighten this fitting. The smaller surface area of the ball may damage the part at this torque value. Drop a washer, then the spring, and then the second washer into the shutter crown. Holding the regulator over the shutter crown, slide the crown up into position before inverting it to retain the loose parts. Test the spring for smooth action. Add a lightly lubricated O-ring to the shutter valve. Do not lubricate the shutter valve threads. Screw the valve into position, tightening it with a hex key. Torque this fitting to 27 inch pounds with a 4 millimeter hex socket. Do not over torque this fitting. Press the DIN O ring into place and check it for seating. Add O rings to all port plugs. and tighten all but two low pressure port plugs in place in the regulator body. This completes reassembly of the DGX Gears Extra first stage. Testing will follow. Obtain a tank, or a regulated gas supply at 500 pounds per square inch. Now install a tuned second stage on a low pressure hose, install a BCD hose, attaching an IP gauge with a BCD connector. With the regulator attached to your 500 PSI supply, and with a finger on the second stage purge button to act as a safety valve, Slowly open the tank valve while watching the intermediate pressure. If IP exceeds 145 PSI, immediately turn off the tank before releasing the purge button. The high pressure compartment should then be disassembled, inspecting the seat and piston knife edge for retained lint, damage, or defect. If the IP does not exceed specification, release the purge button and watch intermediate pressure. With IP not over 145 PSI, the purge button is released and the valve locks up. While IP drift, a climb of a few PSI before lockup is quite common with a new high pressure seat. IP creep or a continued climb past 145 PSI is an out of specification condition, which again requires disassembly and inspection. At 500 PSI, intermediate pressure after lockup must be no lower than 125 PSI. Intermediate pressure may rise a few PSI as the high pressure seat takes a set and the mainspring is compressed fractionally more. Cycle the second stage 
by breathing or purging about 50 times to allow the high pressure seat to conform to the piston knife edge. Again, IP drift of a few PSI before lockup is allowable with the new seat. Depressurize the regulator set and reattach to a source of breathing gas at 3000 PSI. With the regulator attached to a 3000 PSI supply, once again, carefully pressurize the regulator set with light pressure on the purge button. Slowly open the tank, release the purge button, and check IP. Once again, a small amount of IP drift is common with the new seat. IP at 3000 PSI should be the same or higher than that measured at 500 PSI, but in no case over 145 PSI. Cycle the second stage with small breaths or purging another 50 times. Stabilized IP may drop a few PSI as the seat mates to the piston and the valve closes more crisply, but with use, IP may rise a few PSI as the piston knife edge takes a deeper set in the seat. After lockup, intermediate pressure at all tank pressures must be less than 145 PSI. This completes assembly and testing of the gear's extra first stage. Dive Gear Express videos are made available for educational purposes only, to provide general understanding of scuba diving related topics and not to provide specific advice. Please read the essential information page at the URL shown.